Kathleen Stock's book, Material Girls, Why Reality Matters for Feminism, sparked a wave of anger and threats from some trans activists and academics, who accused her of being transphobic, hateful and harmful. In her book, Stock challenges the idea that gender identity is all that matters, and argues that biological sex is a relevant factor for feminism. She also questions whether trans women count as women, and whether they should have access to women-only spaces and resources. Stock faced a backlash and controversy for expressing these views, both online and offline. Some of the incidents she encountered include, a student campaign against her at the University of Sussex, where she was a professor of philosophy, demanding that she be sacked or silenced. The campaign included posters, graffiti, petitions and protests on campus. A cancellation of her book launch at an independent bookshop in Brighton, after the shop received abusive messages and threats of violence from anonymous callers. A harassment and intimidation campaign on social media, where she was subjected to insults, slurs, doxing and death threats from anonymous accounts. A pressure from some of her colleagues and peers in academia, who signed open letters denouncing her views and calling for her exclusion from academic events and publications. Stock eventually resigned from her post at the University of Sussex in 2021, citing the lack of institutional support and the hostile environment she faced. She also faced calls to no platform her from speaking at the Oxford Union in 2023. Stock has defended her views as a legitimate contribution to the academic debate on gender identity, and has criticized the culture of silencing and censoring any dissenting voices on this issue. She has also expressed sympathy for young people who are confused or anxious about their gender identity, and has advocated for a more nuanced and compassionate approach to the topic. Stock's book has also received praise and support from some feminists, philosophers and journalists, who have commended her for her courage, clarity and rigor in tackling a complex and controversial subject. In this section, I will discuss the implications and consequences of Stock's book for feminism, trans rights, free speech and academic freedom, and why she believes that trans people and feminists can collaborate to achieve some of their political aims. Stock's book, Material Girls, Why Reality Matters for Feminism, is a critique of the influential theory that we all have an inner feeling known as a gender identity, and that this feeling is more socially significant than our biological sex. Stock argues that this theory is not only philosophically flawed, but also politically harmful, especially for women and girls. One of the main implications of Stock's book is that the categories of woman and man are not altered by inner feelings of gender identity. Just saying you are a woman or feeling like you are a woman does not put you in the category of woman. These categories are rooted in biological sexual dimorphism, which has profound effects on human life and society. For Stock, trans women are not women, and to conflate them is to commit a category mistake. This has several consequences for feminism, which is a political movement that aims to liberate women from oppression based on their sex. Stock claims that gender identity theory undermines feminism by erasing the reality and importance of sex differences, by allowing male-bodied people to access women-only spaces and resources, by scrambling heterosexual and homosexual relationships, and by altering medicine, public health, and criminal justice. For instance, Stock argues that gender identity theory threatens women's safety and privacy by allowing anyone who identifies as a woman to enter spaces like locker rooms, bathrooms, shelters, and prisons, where women are vulnerable to male violence and harassment. She also argues that gender identity theory harms women's sports by allowing male-bodied athletes who identify as women to compete against female-bodied athletes who have a clear physical disadvantage. She cites examples of trans women dominating women's sports such as cycling, weightlifting, rugby, and mixed martial arts. Another consequence of Stock's book is that it challenges the idea that gender identity is all that matters for trans rights. Stock acknowledges that trans people face discrimination and violence because of their gender expression, and she supports their right to live authentically and safely. However, she does not think that this requires accepting that trans women are literally women or that trans men are literally men. She thinks that trans rights can be secured without denying the reality and relevance of sex differences. 
For example, Stock suggests that trans people can have legal recognition of their preferred name and pronouns without changing their sex marker on official documents. She also suggests that trans people can have access to appropriate healthcare and counseling without imposing puberty blockers or cross-sex hormones on children who may later regret their decisions. She also suggests that trans people can have protection from hate crimes and harassment without criminalizing dissenting opinions or silencing critical voices. This leads to another consequence of Stock's book, it exposes a crisis of free speech and academic freedom in British universities and beyond. Stock argues that gender identity theory has become a dogma that cannot be questioned or challenged without facing severe backlash and censorship. She recounts her own experience of being vilified and ostracized by students and colleagues who accused her of being transphobic and bigoted for expressing her views. She also cites examples of other academics, writers, journalists, activists, and artists who have been harassed, threatened, deplatformed, or fired for criticizing gender identity theory. Stock defends her right to free speech and academic freedom as essential for intellectual inquiry and democratic debate. She rejects the idea that her views are hate speech or that they seek to erase trans people's identity. She argues that disagreement is not hatred or violence, and that different perspectives can coexist without harming anyone. She calls for more tolerance and dialogue among those who disagree on this issue. Finally, Stock proposes a way forward for trans people and feminists to collaborate to achieve some of their political aims. She argues that both groups share some common interests and enemies, they both oppose sexism, homophobia, misogyny, patriarchy, capitalism, and authoritarianism. They both value diversity, autonomy, dignity, and justice. They both face oppression and violence from reactionary forces who want to maintain the status quo. Stock suggests that trans people and feminists can work together on issues such as fighting poverty, racism, war, environmental destruction, religious fundamentalism, and corporate exploitation. She also suggests that they can respect each other's choices and experiences without imposing their own definitions or expectations on each other. She envisions a future where trans people and feminists can coexist peacefully and productively without sacrificing their own identities or principles.